वेलकम बैक एवरी वन टू होम्योपी जूटो इन टी टी क्लासेस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन वी विल बी डीलिंग विद द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज़ अबाउट द एडवांसमेंट्स इन द एजुकेशनल टेक्नोलॉजी सी एजुकेशनल टेक्नोलॉजी मीन्स वॉट इट इज़ द यूज ऑफ डिजिटल टूल्स ओके यूसेज ऑफ डिजिटल टूल्स इन द एजुकेशन ओके एजुकेशनल टेक्नोलॉजी मीन्स यूजिंग द डिजिटल टूल्स इन द लर्निंग और एजुकेशन सिस्टम ओके सो दिस कैन बी बेसिक टूल्स टू एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजीज ओके यू सेज ऑफ बेसिक टूल्स लाइक मे बी पोस्टल सिस्टम और ई मेल सो फ्रॉम दैट टू द एडवांस ए आर और वी आर और ए आई टेक्नोलॉजी एवरीथिंग कम एवरीथिंग कम्स अंडर एजुकेशन टेक्नोलॉजीज सो फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट वील बी लर्निंग अबाउट डिफरेंट टूल्स इन्वॉल्व इन द एजुकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी फर्स्ट वन वी हैड इन द अर्ली ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी मीन्स अर्ली टू थाउजेंड्स what happened early 1900s only what happened was the new era of education began where computers came into play computer came into education where for educational games and word processing all those things for all those things computer was being used but as the um, technology advanced as different things came into play the email came then the wifi came then the ai everything has come at at this moment right so the uh, with each advancements the learning methods was reshaped and accessibility also increased fine so early tools was just a computer then the internet came then the mobile learning then immersive tech are actually vr ar all those things come under immersive technology okay these were the initial things that that came okay now we'll see step by step early digital tools early digital tools was uh, by the introduction of computers in the classroom when did that happen it happened in the 1900s that is a late 9th, 20th century and the early 2000s fine so basic applications like word processing and educational games was the initial work done with the computer then as the technology advanced floppy disk came then the cd roms came then with that with the cd roms we uh, you might remember about certain simulations right mathematical problems which was taught through the cd roms by certain teachers so that came into play in the uh, cd roms fine the science simulations mathematical equations everything was uh, used to be taught through the cds fine so that is the early development of the technology then came the internet okay internet when internet was um, discovered and invented with the online learning or with that on online learning also developed right so internet expanded the access okay expanded the access of education to a massive population okay till now whoever were, were not able to go to school they were able to get access through education through the internet okay that is what is happening right now fine so online courses were were open M O O C that is massive online open courses. Okay, massive open online courses which actually democratize the education, democratize the access to education. Because nowadays you might see about advertisements about Byju's or Coursera or edX or it can be Udemy and Academy, all those kinds of courses which is available. These are massive online open courses which anyone can take through the internet. remote accessibility increased through this thing okay platforms like coursera edx udemy an academy all those places opened up and that is happening because of the internet okay development of the internet facility so that was about the internet now early digital tools were just the computer cd rom floppy disk etc then came our internet now online learning developed then came the mobile learning smartphones were developed right when the smartphones came into play tablets smartphones everything they in uh, they enable the on the go learning means computer and laptops we have to stay at a place and learn right but mobile and smartphones mobile smartphones and the uh, tablets allowed us about uh, and enabled us with the on go learning wherever we go we can take these things with us so making the learning more flexible and accessible okay it became more accessible fine uh, now the learning apps like duolingo app okay now yeah for in our case only homey page tutor app similarly we have certain apps for similar similar learnings okay for everything every course we will have app applications available right so that happened because of the advancements of the technology okay that increase the flexibility also gamification increase because in duolingo if you have used the duolingo there are places right 
in which stage we are then if we cross that stage we'll get a reward or award like more amount of uh, encouragement is given through the app so these apps are modeled in such a way so that the learning becomes more enjoyable and more flexible that was about mobile learning fine then came our interactive technology okay interactive or in immersive technologies that are vr means virtual reality ar means augmented reality augmented reality and ai means artificial intelligence all these created a hands on technique okay hands on learning experiences right for example in the simulation classes in the simulatory classes vr is now used with that the surgeons can practice not only vr ar also is used surgeons can practice the surgeries on a virtual patient okay on a virtual patient or subject and they can simulate the similar surgical environment and learn it so it it becomes more accessible and also because it's a technology based we don't need a actual simulator right we don't need an actual model for suture learning learning suture or making a surgical incision right so everything can be done it can be reused we can reset can be done right as in a game where uh, we where whenever it there's a game over this can be resetted similarly in augmented reality and virtual reality the situations can be reset and used again that creates a recycling of resources that is available in the interactive and immersive technologies remember which are the immersive technologies we have virtual reality augmented reality and artificial intelligence fine real world simulations can be done for practical skill building okay for building the skills whenever there is a need for building the skills these things come into play vr ar and ai okay most of us use chat gpt right chat gpt is a form of ai similarly gemini we have gemini we have bard we have meta everything is there meta ai so similarly samsung ai everything is a form of if required or if if we want we can use it as a form of learning okay so that is about the different kinds of technologies which is increasing the accessibility and flexibility of education but even though there are so many things there are certain problems or challenges which are faced in the technology compartment fine right? because of the key issues which are the key issues digital divide not everyone has accessibility and also about teacher training whenever a new technology comes into play comes into education system the teachers who have been there from years together or maybe who have been teaching from teaching the traditional methods they have to they have to be trained they have to learn first then only they can teach the students through that right so teaching teacher training becomes very much important and if that is not proper the technology will not be used properly right in the correct way so first one is about digital divide digital divide even though we think the people who have accessibility to internet to this smartphones etc everything they think they uh, that this is available to everyone but actually if we take the statistics 75% more than you see india over here right 75 percentage more than 75 percentage of india will does not have internet access even now okay internet access is not there for more than 75 percentage of the country so there are sections of the society maybe because of any monetary loss or many any problem because of that they will not they are not having an accessibility to internet like we have now right so because of this inequality this educational disparities might occur because the people who have this internet they can easily access the information they will be more informed they will be more educated but the people do not have they won't get that that much enough information or that much enough knowledge which is available to us so that will cause disparities so that is a major problem digital divide in case of the technology fine the people who do not have reliable internet or reliable devices for that sake okay that will create a problem for example during covid 19 each and every the government had passed some um, yeah the government had passed certain laws or certain um, benefits for the people on the rural areas to get this access to the education right but till now people are there who do not have access to devices do not have access to internet and so on fine so that becomes a major challenge in the technology next is teacher training and support because 
the effective use of this technology depends on the teacher if the teacher is trained properly about the resources and, and also if teacher is able to effectively use the technology then only it will be useful for the students also right and also resources resources have to be there infrastructure has to be there in the school or colleges then only the teacher can utilize it properly even though they know how to use if the sufficient technology resources are not there for example augmented and virtual reality is still not available throughout india right there are places who do not know only what vr and ar is right so in certain in such cases it becomes an again a challenging thing which have to be covered by the advancement of the society as a whole fine so insufficient support can cause a problem and because of this it the because of this the technology might be underused fine so this is about the challenges faced in the technology so remember all those things digital divide and training sub training of the teachers have to be proper then only the technology whatever we spoke about like the vr that is immersive technology vr ar and ai the mobile classrooms or mobile learning apps okay the people who should be able to understand what the, what the app is for they should know about the apps and only they'll download those apps and use right so similarly internet and on, online learning how those came into play the mocs is which is massive right now massive open okay massive open online courses okay these are universities or there are online universities from which we can study right like crossera like edx like an academy like medversity like igno okay there are online platforms for all the universities right now which increases the distant learning and also gives the accessibility to the education so this is about the uh, technological advancements in the education fine moving on to the next important topic that is information and communication technology okay ict okay information and communication technology it is ict we will learn about the abbreviations see ict mocc then we have vr ar all those things are abbreviations we have to know what the abbreviations stand for and um, the different terminologies used in ict fine ICT is what it is information and communication technology. We are all the digital tools which is used for communication, creation, storage, and information management. Okay, cloud storage we say right. Storage can be uh, information storage or information management. It uh, it can be create for creation, used for creation or even communication. Okay, all the digital tools comes under ICT. Fine. So what do they do? As a, as we already mentioned, it helps in the enhancement of learning, teaching, and administration. Okay, there is something called as LMS that is used for administrative purposes. Okay, so we will learn about the different terms here. So the abbreviations are in a gist we can say the abbreviations are like ICT, LMS, CMS, VLE, MOCC, Wi-Fi, VPN, and IoT. Okay, what are these things? We will learn now. Right. first one is about ict information and communication technology what is it it is a technology is for information access information communication technology right that is information comes as information access through telecommunication okay which are telecommunication things which we use for information um for information access we have our google meet we have our zoom we have microsoft teams there us n number of Uh, applications or networks which can be used for information and communication technology we have video conferencing apps we have tools okay microsoft uh, teams is one such tool for collaboration for remote learning then we have internet okay we internet wireless uh, wireless networks wifi mobile phones communication medium everything even our mobile phones tablets laptops computers everything comes under this ict because communication is done right information is accessed via these mobile phones via the smartphones via the tablets via the computers through the wireless networks through the internet right so all these communication mediums can be considered to be ict okay it is a broad terminology fine examples are like the google meet i have already mentioned the applications i'm saying okay so google meet requires what it requires a mobile phone or a computer it requires internet right 
so in this uh, in this strata we will have the google meet then the computer or laptop or phone and the internet all these con is considered the information communication information and communication technology fine so whatever you think where technology is used for information access through telecommunication we have the information tele uh, information communication technology fine ict means information communication technology next important one is lms lms means what it is learning management system okay learning management system so these are certain applications or certain softwares for administration documentation tracking reporting and delivery of educational courses this is about the open universities not open online universities like uh, there are certain uh, source learning management learning management system which are like moodle okay totara then we have yeah, lots of things are there these uses these applications or the, these softwares are there which uses the technology for administration for marking the attendance maybe or marking the progress of the student tracking their reports reporting their um, progress okay reporting their progress in the application fine documentation of their uh, exams or assessments or documentation of their classes and also it helps in delivery of educational courses like there are certain certain um, places which provide courses okay it will provide the training programs through the software fine they are called as learning management system it is software for managing and delivering educational con content right managing means administration okay it can be administration can be documentation then it can be tracking reporting okay all these comes at the managing component fine one such example is moodle and there are e front a tutor clara online so all these kinds of application and softwares are available for management learning is managed via a software that is learning management system okay s is for system next one is content management system okay content management system it is actually again a software platform which is used to create manage and modify the digital content okay so there are again lots of uh, softwares which can be used for managing and creating the content remember this is managing the learning fine means uh, administration aspect but here it is content creation okay creating the digital content or managing or modifying the digital content one such example is blackboard okay then magnolia there are different kinds of uh, uh, application or softwares which is used for the content management okay so remember content is for content and the other one is for uh, means uh, content in the educational educational setup it is actually learning materials okay the study materials the video lectures all the creation of this video materials or video lectures or the study materials everything is done via this content management system next important one is vle vle means what virtual learning environment okay virtual learning environment so environmental means environment means it's a digital space okay virtual learning right it is a digital space for what for interactions and resources between the teachers and students right there are google classrooms right google classrooms where such things can occur where the teacher can give up a discussion yeah, this is an example for it it is a, it's a platform where the teacher will give instructions and students work will be put up means the students can upload their work after completing and the teacher can make note of it whoever has submitted and see uh, which one is corrected right graded turned in assigned all these softwares are made to make the learning and teaching easier okay because it, it is virtual um, it becomes much more the paperwork will be lesser but still all the things of learning will occur okay discussion and discussion based teacher instructions can be given okay student work can be checked and verified and assessed also and all the information about the assessment that also can be available fine so this is actually about virtual learning environment we have google classrooms we have all other kinds of uh, softwares which is usually used the main one is google classroom okay announcements can occur 
announcements can be given, assignments can be given, discussions can occur, instructions can be given, works can be set up, work can be graded, work can be assessed and delivered back to a student. Okay, this is a kind of virtual learning environment where we don't have a structured classroom, but the learning occurs via the internet or via the virtual area. Fine. Next is about MOOC means massive open online courses. This is about our um, yeah, the online universities which which we mentioned earlier about edX about the Udemy. YouTube is one of the um, massive open online courses. In this video which you are looking, this is also a, a portion of this massive online open online courses because we are giving this we are giving this uh, lecture or material video material about a certain topic through a open platform okay through an open platform that is a youtube similarly we have udemy we have an academy we have byju's in india okay other things are also there coursera is there then stanford university have their own um, their own kind of uh, massive open online courses where free of cost knowledge is available and also certifiable okay certifiable courses are available fine uh, then for government of India, they have open online courses like Swayam. That's one kind of MOCC. Sorry, MOOC in India, which is done by the government. Fine. The study materials, everything is available in the internet to a large part of or large number of audiences or participants, often free of charge. Okay. So it is usually offered by universities or, universities or educational institutions. Every institution in India and outside India, they do provide certain kind of MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses. One example is Stanford University. They have a massive um, application or courses, online courses available or free of cost. Fine. Then is our Wi-Fi. What is the full form of Wi-Fi? We all use it, right? It is wireless fidelity. Wireless fidelity is the full form of Wi-Fi. They use what? Wireless technology enabling the internet connection that we know within a specific area. This is the basic understanding that everyone might be knowing. It is a wireless technology which enables the internet connection within a specific area. Right? So remember that. And that can be helpful in the education system. Also, a university Wi-Fi or college Wi-Fi can be there that allows the accessibility to the study material from the internet right so that is about wi-fi next is vpn vpn is another one the people who might be living abroad will be more comfortable about comfortable with this particular terminology vpn means virtual private network see while using wi-fi while using a uh, internet all our data is directly going into the internet right which can be used or misused but when we use this virtual private network or VPN, it secures our connection. Because usually, little bit of technological terms I'll be using here. See, our devices use this internet via Wi-Fi or via any kind of Ethernet. They use this uh, or they share our data. That is the IP address, etc. IP address are there. There are certain other the um, other information about our devices that is put up in the internet but if we use a vpn this data will go into the vpn that is a virtual private network then it will encrypt okay that will be encrypted and the ip addresses will be hidden and then it connects to the internet okay then it connects to the internet now our ip address our data is not directly available to the people okay to the people who might misuse or might use it for another thing that is why most of us if we are scrolling through the social media or scrolling through any of the websites automatically we'll start getting ads of the same thing right we'll get we'll start getting ads in the maybe other social medias or in youtube for example right so that is happening because we are not in a actually secure network okay Whenever there is a less secure network, it is advisable to use VPN so that our data is encrypted and it is usually protected. Fine. The IP address, everything, everything is protected. Thereby, our data is not loosely given to the entire world. Okay. So, 
So this one is a kind of uh, VPN or virtual private network. Next important one, next important thing in the terminology is the IoT. IoT means Internet of Things. Okay, Internet of Things. It is actually interconnected devices. Nothing but an interconnection of everyday devices over the internet. Okay. All the things connected to the internet together are called as IoT devices. It can be smart class in this in the smart classroom. Everything is considered considered to be an IoT, right? The the white interactive whiteboard, then our smart lighting. Okay, even in certain advanced uh, hi-fi educational institutions, there might be temperature control things, right? Temperature controlled uh, or climate control systems, which can be. kept or put up in the classroom so mainly in regular classrooms it can be interactive whiteboard or smart lighting okay everything connected to the internet or technology which is used in the classroom can be termed under the internet of things fine so these are the major terminologies which is uh, used or abbreviations which is used in the technology what is the need for understanding all these things understanding the terminologies see if we know this terminology because the era is advancing the generation is advancing the use and knowledge of these terminologies will help in gaining the digital confidence right if a person doesn't know about vpn they cannot freely speak with people who have knowledge about this vpn right so now knowing about these things knowing what vpn is knowing what wifi is knowing the I, what iot is this will increase the con confidence in the teacher's point of view okay and if we know about certain things we we will be more um, comfortable in will be more comfortable in using them in our practice right in our teaching practice that is the use or importance of knowing about this this terminology is fine so that was about the terminologies i've mentioned the major ones the vpn virtual private network iot means internet of things wifi means wireless fidelity mooc means massive on open online courses vla means virtual learning environment cms means content management system lms means uh, learning management system and ict which is actually information and communication technology fine so this was the terminologies next important one is about the usage of internet intranet email and audio visual conferencing in education okay so internet intranet email audio visual conferencing the access accessibility and the importance of these things will be learnt in this session in this section okay so obviously internet has now become indispensable for us in education educational point of view right so that gives access to the vast amount of information throughout the globe the resources the communication channels everything is connected to the internet right now right so it facilitates the research and also increases the online learning now we will be learning uh, this particular topic under certain points first when i have already mentioned internet does revolutionize the access and vast information access is available through the internet now we will know the access of information a little bit detail about the access how the information is accessed information is accessed via the internet via online online databases right online databases then we have ebooks we have websites we have academic journals we have educational websites remember google scholar through which we can get research papers through research papers or research journals ebooks everything is available via this google scholar right similarly we have um, other places also like proquest we have J jstor okay so these are the places or databases from where we can get the information okay can get access to the information via online databases ebooks academic journals educational website okay these are few of the examples of how the information can be accessed fine that is via the internet obviously through the internet through these places we'll get the access to information next one is online learning or moc moc right so online sub um, or internet support online learning platform is available now if to everyone i have already mentioned it is available everywhere one of that kind is crossera the other one is edx then we have uh, yeah udemy okay if you you people have used udemy at one point of time all the 
courses are um, available for not free of course but actually some are free some are in a minimal amount right udemy app gives off those courses for free of courses it can be anything it can be from learning dance it can be to learning um, complex coding okay everything is available in udemy similarly in india we have an academy or uh, it can be uh, by juice or it can be anything open universities igno is one of the open platform medversity is another kind of online platform which is giving us access to the learning right so online learning and moc is one kind of platform okay they are platform that offers free learning often free learnings otherwise it can be less cost okay less costly next one is about collaboration communication tools see projects can be done via internet right projects group projects can be done via internet by collaborating right so for collaboration itself and for communication again we have tools we have zoom we have uh, trello we have google docs in which this is one of the google docs thing how one project it can be writing project two or three people can at the same time work on the one work on one single project right so it can be made it can be shared it can be completed via in a smaller amount of time because it is not required that one person finishes their part then sends to the other po- other portion other person instead together they can collaborate at the same time and complete the project okay so collaboration is done via google docs zoom trello then we have one drive there are s- lots of um, options for the same thing okay collaboration so that is for discussions group projects task management everything can be done regardless of location even if you are in a remote area this things can be done collaboration group projects can be done fine simultaneously editing and simultaneously collaborating at the same time is possible through these documents or these uh, tools next is about intranet okay intranet what is an intranet earlier it used to be more um, available intranet is actually a private network within an organization okay usually a school or universities where information is information and the resources are are shared among them only okay earlier it used to be more popular because um, one single institution used to have hundreds of computers all connected to a single source okay single source and the information can be shared from one computer to the other computer okay it is not taken from the entire world wide web instead it is from one computer to the other computer easy share sharing of the uh, information okay so that is about intranet intranet connects the yeah this is the components intranet connects the components with each other and internet com- connects connects the all the com- components with the entire world wide web fine so that is about the intranet remember the difference between intranet and internet internet connects with the world wide web the complete online sec- uh, servers while intranet connects with the local server which connects with each other okay which is connected with each other thereby the sharing sharing of information is easier from the local computers with each other not to the world wide web okay it is more secure internet is more secure and uh, it only gives access to the members of organization okay that gives a controlled environment okay if internal collaboration internal communication is more done via the intranet okay it is accessible only to the authorized members faculty students or staffs of particular institution or organization okay so that is about intranet it secures the connections that's it next is email right email obviously um, for in second yeah email is usually a tool for communication communication tool right in education all the feedbacks all the announcements all the administrative communication everything can be accessed via the email everything can be sent via the email right so formal communication one of the method of formal communication is email right so that is another form of technology which is used next is administrative and communication or organization communication that can also be done via the mails notification school events notification about the school events policy updates deadlines everything can again be given via or notified um, to the student via this 
email or any other communication tools right that can also be done via the intranet or via the internet everything can be used to give this right so sending the announcement giving the clarifications of anything that everything can be done via the emails right so student teacher, student teacher communication organization or institution student communication institution teacher communication everything can be synchronized with the email okay it is a tool for information processing information exchanging and even um, for formal communication fine so next one is about the student teacher communication it can be via the audio visual conferencing or audio video conferencing that is done okay that is done in the collaborative environment like virtual communication through zoom calls through zoom meet or google meet or through any other kinds of um, group calls right so virtual communication virtual collaborations can be done via this audio video conferencing which is massively done in when when it was at the time of covid right everything everyone is very much knowing about this audio video conferencing right so remote learning is accessible meetings can be sorry meetings can be done via this zoom technology or the video conferencing system workshops can be done interactive sessions when can be done even interviews can be taken via this audio video conference everything is done via this one examples are like zoom google meet or any of the form of uh, audio calls or video calls right so is conferencing have been very much important in learning okay in the learning or the education it has been very much helpful especially when the pandemic had hit and education had to be paused these came into popularity these gained the popularity fine next is about the remote learning similarly zoom teams microsoft teams google meet everything had been used for remote learning right um, remote learning like con conducting a live lecture via this uh, zoom meet that was very much popular during the covid times right next is about the interactive learning experiences okay interactive learning experiences via the via the video conferencing because of this video conferences we'll take zoom only or we'll take microsoft teams there are options to conduct discussions there can be options for live question and answer sessions right all these can be facilitated via this uh, interactive learning or video conferencing okay so that is actually a very much easier access okay easy access will be there to learning to interactions even if the person is physically present in a remote area okay that enhances the learning by connecting the people okay connecting the people with experts because experts are not always available to physically come and take a class but with this video conferencing it increases the accessibility to the ex subject experts okay and also uh, if people are not able to move or uh, travel to a certain place they can get the experience of experiencing of experience of watching that particular thing uh, maybe a museum visit okay museum visit these things are not easily accessible to everyone but the people who have gone or the curator in the museum they can uh, they can conduct a video conference and, and show the people whatever there it there, it, there is to teach or study fine so these are the major things in the in the ict okay the major things about the inter internet intranet email and video con audio video conference of conferencing we have learned how we will get access and uh, through what applications do these things happen fine so remote learning accessibility is increased via these things so next important portion or next important important section of this one is the ICT and governance method okay ICT and governance methods of teaching in higher education here we will be learning about the teacher centered learner centered methods offline and online methods we will be learning more about the MOC MOC SWAYAM SWAYAM PRABHA etc okay all these things will be learned in detail fine so teaching methods are very much important to learn or to practice properly and influ it has to be influenced in particularly this era with the communication technology okay 
so we will be learning about the teaching methods about the teacher center and learner center the offline and online methods everything will be dealt in detail okay the teacher center method focuses on what focuses focuses on the instructor okay emphasizes only on the knowledge transfer like lectures or demonstrations in these areas what happens in lectures and demonstration the teacher or the lecturer starts giving classes okay starts giving direct classes and classes or even demonstration or just a presentation and the student has has to just listen and learn okay just sit and listen and learn that is the major thing so here it is majorly teacher centered teacher has to finish the topic or finish the session or do the demonstration and make the students understand everything is put up on the teacher okay that is teacher centered methods examples are lectures demonstrations and presentations fine so main characteristics are the structured lectures and demonstration i have already mentioned that is done in the teacher centered method next is assessment driven okay it is assessment driven because teacher has to assess right the students performance so every time there will be quizzes there will be exams and there might be recall uh, recall exercises done in between the classes so that the teacher assesses the students focus right if the student is understanding the material or not so that is that has to be done in teacher centered method otherwise we will never get the feedback next is limited student interaction because during the lecture it is a passive learning process and the student are of a less uh, interaction there won't be a less there will be a less interaction in between the students so it will cause a passive learning process okay that is one of the problem but yeah there is a limited student interaction in the lectures or demonstrations where the teacher is teaching a student has to sit and listen okay that is coming under teacher centered method it is a traditional form of teaching next coming to the challenges i have already mentioned it is a passive learning environment where the student doesn't have to do much they just have to become a recipient of the information and uh, because of that it will lead to less retention the retention of the information is lesser that is why regular quizzes or regular assessment have to be done so that the teacher understands the progress next one is one size fits all approach this actually there is only one uh, learning style here just sitting and listening or just giving a lecture so only one one method is followed okay only one method is followed throughout the uh, throughout the learning process okay that is called as one size fits all approach okay but this one problem is this in this one size fits all approach is that we mentioned in the earlier videos right about the different learning styles the work learning styles the gagne style so that will not be followed here right so all learners will not be um, will not get or find this particular method as useful okay because some people will be more uh, more uh, learning learning more from the kinesthetic method right but that is not followed here only teacher is talking and uh, teacher is giving classes right that will create again a difficulty in retention and also assimilation in the student next is about the learner centered method so here the focus is on the student okay learn this is focus on the student and how the student participates and if the student's critical thinking is activated or not okay emphasis is more on the participation and critical thinking how is it done it is done via discussions via group project one problem is time consuming that is one thing but yeah the student led um, uh, student led method is called as learner centered method participation is more here critical thinking is more here that will increase the retention right so participation collaboration critical thinking is more in the learner centered method active learners the so students are what students are active learners active learners or active listeners active learners via discussions via taking part in the projects via the participation or exploration or problem solving everything is done right so the characteristics i have already mentioned there is active learning personalized learning right if uh, considering the different learning style the teaching method or learning method is tailored for the student thereby they'll get a personalized learning okay based on the needs of the student that is one uh, that is one of the characteristic of 
learner centered method it is a student led thing students are active listeners they engage in group work they engage in discussions they engage in engage in the hands on projects okay thereby increasing the learning experience feedback and reflection is more here because regular feedback will be available and regular reflection on the student himself that is also there increasing the self assessment okay self assessment will also be occurring in the learner centered method fine so that is a characteristics but here also they can they have certain challenges what are the challenges resource intensive Re intensive resource have to uh, have to be present right each learner requires their own method of learning for that different kinds of resources have to be available so that is one thing then variable student participation means every student will not be as as enthusiastic in participation so that will again create a disparity that might create a disparity right so that is a major challenges in the uh, learner centered method now coming into next set that is offline and online offline method means what in person in person teaching or face to face teaching that is done in traditional classrooms the way we all have learned till now right that was in in person method or um, face to face teaching method right so that occurs in physical classrooms okay that occurs in physical classrooms what does they uh, include they include the lectures okay oh, sorry yeah they include the lectures they include the seminars okay they include the practical classes where the teacher and student are face to face there is no use of digital digital technology is actually minimally used or it is not used in the offline methods right so there are certain characteristics i have already mentioned face to face interaction will be there in between the student and the instructor physical resources are used what are the physical resources the textbooks right textbooks then the white boards or black boards white boards or black boards they are used handouts printed material printed material or handout or subject study material are given to the students right the physical resources are there available structured environment it occurs in the physical environment physical classrooms are used in the offline method physical classrooms the physical environment is there uh, where the learning takes place next the challenges here also we will have certain challenges flexibility is very less right there is only a physical classroom students have to be physically present to get the class okay so if the person is from a remote location they have to shift their place to the particular area where the teaching has been teaching is occurring and they have to study from there so unless and until they are physically present they won't learn anything so that is the problem it has a limited flexibility then resource constraint so if the physical space means the classroom is smaller or the physical materials are lesser they don't have a physical handout or the study materials are lesser that will again limit the accessibility right that is the constraints in the resources fine uh, the yeah the white boards if the the infrastructure is not proper then again that will create accessibility limitation next is the online methods online methods means what it uses a digital okay digital technologies or digital platforms okay so that is accessed that is used in the teaching process so the people who are uh, staying in the remote areas who have limited access to the physical classroom they will be able to learn properly so learning via digital platforms or digital methods is called as online methods what do they use they use they use e learning platform they use online courses they use the virtual classrooms for teaching okay the main characteristics are again access accessibility is more the other one was limited flexibility rigidity and this is flexible right everyone can learn anytime from anywhere just that they have to have the internet access okay internet access if it is there they can learn only that is the major thing next is use of use of digital resources what are the digital resources the other one was physical resources right actual books but here it can be via e books right it can be via online videos okay online videos then other ones are interactive modules modules interactive modules can be used in the learning process right use of digital resources uh, like e books online videos or interactive modules that can be used to learn the access accessibility is more to any person who is having internet access they can 
use the, this method of learning then the flexibility is more because learning schedules can especially in case of modules interactive modules that student can learn anytime at any way they want it is self paced it is not a rigid net at this time you have to study every day it is not like that if the student is free enough and they don't have any problems in their schedule they can learn so flexible schedules are available in this method okay but even though because of, even though we have all these good points there are challenges faced already mentioned right 75 percentage of india do not have internet access so digital divide will be there so otherwise the people who have internet access they might um, the rest of 25 percentage in that maybe only 10 percentage have proper internet access means uh, proper connectivity might be there the other people will not have a proper connectivity so 15 percentage people will have um, not proper connectivity so that will again cause a digital divide the accessibility will be hampered over there right so that will be a major problem next is limited face-to-face -face interaction some people need the direct personal interaction with the teachers or the instructors so if that is not there some people will lack this particular um, learning enthusiasm right that is why certain people go for study buddies the people who are in um, yeah the people who are in the open online courses they usually prefer a study buddy or a friend who or his who is also in the certain courses okay so that they can combine study so some people need that personal interaction between the instructor and the peer or direct interaction has to be there for some some people they might face a challenge challenge when they study in the online platforms okay so what are certain kinds of online platform we have soyam okay soyam is a government initiative indian government initiative which gives accessible and education to everyone it is usually free or it might have a uh, small fee for certain courses okay uh, there are basic courses or basic certified courses okay basic certified courses available in the soyam platform okay um, last uh, two years back it had been made mandatory for students to attend soyam courses so that is one more thing so with that soyam platform also was encouraged and also open learning courses was also encouraged so what do they do this government of india had to achieve three cardinal principles means educational policy uh, it, sorry three cardinal principles of educational policy like access equity and quality okay access to education access to education equity to education and quality to education okay quality to education these three points have been achieved or have been tried to achieve through the soyam platform okay in the soyam platform there are faculties who are well trained or well experienced faculty who teach via modules okay via modules or interactive courses and at the end of this they conduct assessment and after the assessment they get the certification also certification also is uh, also is um, given which is recognized by the institutions okay which is recognized by the institutions for example it might be iit faculty who is taking classes so if the student completes the course takes the exam and also passes the certain exam summative assessment exam then they will get a certified certificate they'll get a certificate from iit okay from recognized by the iit so those things happen in soyam okay so main thing the courses range of courses are very high it can be from simple psychology it can psychology to maybe nutrition courses or uh, in depth clinical courses are also available then certification will get certified certificates from this particular thing which is recognized by the institutions then interactive thing because it is uh, soyam platform gives video lectures it there are provisions to conduct discussions also along with every course there are areas where the people can discuss the students can discuss among themselves and they can even discuss and interact with the faculty that is also available discussion forums are available okay discussion forums are available so that is a third point and the final one uh, is about the comprehensibility that is all the things are usually free or sorry free or it can be even of less cost okay so it offers courses from undergraduate to the postgraduate level also so 
that is one important thing it's a government indian government initiative to give accessible education okay so faculty are well experienced and high end faculty who take the classes next one is a not notable online platform that is swayam prabha swayam prabha it is giving high quality educational content through satellite tv satellite tv based educational or uh, system educational channels okay educational content is given through television channels okay the people who are there in the remote areas they will not have access to internet every time but every village has one tv right now the thing is like that that every village will have access to tv right in the 200, 2000s it was like that so there used to be programs that was telecasted in the tv televisions through satellites dtl satellites were used so through that certain channels were there which used to promote or promote or give out or provide high quality educational content okay educational content in different languages okay different languages and different subjects okay so broadcast channels were used broadcast channels were used supplementary learning okay it, it is not an actual um, this thing it used to act as a supplement supplementary learning to the to the people okay because the people will be going to the students will be going to the classes as schools or colleges along with that when they get the supplementary learning from the broadcast channel it always improves the support okay it actually gives a additional support that's it then accessible content so people who have limited uh, internet access they can access this swayam prabha remember swayam is a online platform but swayam prabha is actually a satellite tv based channel okay tv channels or tv cha through tv channels educational content used to be given next is about the moc what is moc massive open online courses okay massive open online okay it is massive because it is given to a vast amount of people it is open because it is usually given free access or open access is given and online because they need internet access okay it is open to entire world okay throughout um, open to all the learners who require it okay this global access is available different subjects okay it is given for different subjects uh, it can be computer science it can be humanities it can be business it can be arts it can be anything like medical education is also available via this moc fine it is offered by whom offered by the universities and educational institutions all the institutions educational institution do provide online open courses okay and flexible learning because of the flexible modules okay modules are there in this particular set because of the modules can be tailored to the students need that is why it becomes flexible okay so these are the major things about moc and uh, online platforms through which the students can learn fine Uh, we said about swayam swayam prabha and the mocs and also about the different kinds of methods online and offline methods teacher centered and learner centered methods different challenges faced and different advantages of all those things have been learned next moving on to the topic is about the teaching support systems okay we learned how the teaching is done now we need the support system what supports the teacher in teaching okay this include the physical resources okay physical resources and also conventional method of instruction what are the characteristics okay characteristics of this one uh, i'll just mention here what are the characteristics of the teaching teaching support system we have the lecture notes okay lecture notes then the textbooks textbooks then blackboards okay blackboards in which the teacher writes their information which they want to share blackboards white boards then we have handouts okay all the resources which help in giving access to the information can be done or uh, can be categorized under the teaching support system okay so here uh, when we uh, talk about teaching support system we have traditional teaching support system modern teaching support system and ict based teaching support system so traditional support system is actually the um traditional methods which were used that is the lecture notes 
textbooks, blackboards, whiteboards, printed handouts. These are actually have been used from decades. So from the time teaching has started, these things are there, right? Established methods and tools of teaching, right? These are the lecture notes, uh, blackboards, whiteboards, and printed handouts, fine. So traditional methods use these uh, lecture notes and textbook, right? Printed materials are there. Then blackboards are, are for visual aids. Printed, ha uh, printed handouts are supplementary materials which the students can use to summarize the key points of the class, right? So these are the major points or uh, characteristics of the traditional teaching support system. Next, the challenges. Even though there are vast amount of resources, the problem here is limited interactivity. Because through the textbook and through the uh, lecture notes or through the whiteboard, everything is visual, right? Everything is visual, but there is no interaction. The interactive elements are low. That will reduce the retention again. In this time and error, the multimedia is required, right? For better interaction or better retention. So that is one thing. Next is resource contain, uh, constraint because of reduced infrastructure. If there is infrastructure which is, which is low, and if there are no enough printed handouts or lecture material or books available, that will again uh, cause a constraint and limited access. Accessibility will be less if the resources are low. Okay. Next is about modern teaching support system. It incorporates or modern, right? It incorporates technology along with the traditional methods. It will also it will also contain the technology. When that occurs the learning is little more enriched and that will support the traditional method okay that is in the form of earlier there was only blackboard or whiteboard right now powerpoint presentations came with the powerpoint presentations the vis visual impact was little bit more in the powerpoint presentations we can add multimedia that will again in increase the interactions right and similarly interactive whiteboard interactive whiteboard is again a better or uh, better use of technology right then the education software okay education software can also be used like simulation programs any tool which is designed software designed for learning okay powerpoint for the visuals interactive whiteboard for the multimedia lessons and education software for simulation and teaching games so gamification of the teaching system okay these are the points or characteristics of modern teaching support system next is about the challenges this also has challenges because increased technology dependence is happening here right because of technology involvement if at all the technology crashes it has to be corrected immediately right the troubleshooting has to be there immediate otherwise there will be lag in the teaching right if there is increased dependence that will that can not will that can affect the teaching teachers uh, own method right teachers own method is reduced if there is increased dependency okay if there is increased uh, in uh, sorry increased dependency on the technology fine teaching needs educators require or um, sorry training is this educator requires training right educators require training for using the technology so that is double work for the institution so teachers have it have to be trained to uh, trained to use this technological com tools so that they can use it effectively for the students okay if the teacher is not uh, as flexible as uh, for as, a re as it is required to use technology that might again cause a problem in the support system fine right? so that is about the modern system now next is about ict based teaching support system okay ict based teaching support system actually contains certain components which will be learning so ict is what it is information Communication technology, right? information and communication technology. Anything that connected, uh, anything that is connected to the information and communication or the tools or platforms for teaching and learning, everything comes under the ICT, right? So it utilizes information and communication technology for what kind of learning? Remote and interactive learning. For remote and interactive learning, this is used. So the various examples are there. First, we learn about each of them. First one is learning management system, okay? You already mentioned about the learning management system like Moodle, like Blackboard. There are educational platforms or platforms like these things which manage the course, course content, which tracks the student's progress. Everything is tracked, okay? 
everything is tracked via this particular systems okay moodle blackboard are certain examples uh, students con uh, sorry course content students progress and communication everything available in single application single software that is called as learning management system that is one component of ICT next one is online collaboration tools where the collaborative learning can occur like Google Docs Microsoft Teams okay, there are still more examples these enable the collaborative work and communication among the students and instructors because these things have forums okay discussion forums are there places where the collaborative work can be there and can be done simultaneously okay together the work can be done by two or more people that is about the online collaboration okay teams and my google docs enable that next is about virtual classrooms okay virtual classrooms are like zoom webex google meet or uh, yeah microsoft teams also enables the same thing that will support what the zoom and webex support live classes okay live classes live classes even interactive classes live interactive online classes will be there classes and meetings can be done via this virtual classrooms example for virtual classrooms massive examples are zoom and webex where the students can discuss share their screen share their task and even work on a single group task together okay teaching can be done task also can be done all can occur through this virtual classrooms fine these are the main characteristics of ICT learning that is ICT support system that is LMS learning management system we have um, online collaboration tools we have virtual classrooms okay virtual learning environment VLE we mentioned right VLE online collaboration tools and LMS are coming under ICT based system now even though there are certain things again here also the same thing occurs there also is a digital divide right because the accessibility is lesser for some people that can cause problem that can cause a challenge for ICT based system because this is highly dependent on the internet access right so that is a problem here then privacy and security because you see direct communication is there with the internet then that can cause leakage of data that is why we need to use a VPN or certain secure secure access has to be there right so because of the high internet access or internet reliability the user data is usually not secure so to secure all this data or secure the connection VPN can be used okay that is one of the area which uh, which can be used to tackle this privacy and security issues that can occur in ICT based system and uh, so that is how the ICT has transformed the entire education because nowadays 10 years back if people have um, would have asked about the zoom and webex it was not that um, yeah not that popular either right but now after the covid times after the pandemic had hit this ICT systems ICT support system have had a massive impact on the uh, teaching methodology and also the learning because that contains uh, 90, uh, 90 80 percent of the teaching system teaching methodology right now so that has transformed the entire education system and we have learned about the teaching teacher center and learner center how this is more rigider and this is more learner center and increases the retention the approaches are more but both of them have their own challenges that can be tackled by certain things next is about online offline methods online methods require a physical classroom online methods we have soyam soyam prabha mooc ict support system everything comes under the online system okay offline is traditional system which have been done from decades together decades or even centuries it is being carried on okay so with this we have finished about the particular topic of educational technology all the major points or sections have been covered so this will be available and along with the other videos of the NTT classes which is available in the in our website subscribe to the channel and like the video if possible so that will get the various uh, videos which will be uploading in the web in the uh, channel regarding this NTT classes so make sure to practice the MCQs only so then only we'll understand our lacunae okay, assess yourself continuously okay thank you for listening have a nice day